down. He wants to heal your family. Stand with me to Genesis chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 22 through chapter 3, verse 1. Genesis chapter 2. Let's read it together. You ready? All right. They're not ready. Let's read it together. You ready? And the rib that God, the, the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Let's just say that again. And the man said, this is at last, bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Before you sit down, tell the person next to you it's going to get better. Tell the other person next to you, tell them it's going to get better. 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 Thank you, musicians. They got the message notes. I forgot to mention that. The message notes, they have them to pass around. Just keep your hands up and they'll get them to you. And we got some in the front. They, they got the message notes. Just keep your hands up. They'll get it to you. They'll get it to you. Look around left and right. They'll get it to you. They'll get it to you. Okay. It's like they have the last handful right now that they're handing out. It's going to get better. So oh, looks like they're out. All right. So we need to print a little bit more. I got you. I got you. So we... Praise God. We'll definitely print more this also. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. We went with a time that we have. Everyone wants to be a power couple, but nobody wants the power of God. But you can't be a power couple without the power of God. Are oh, you here with me, church? I want to let you know I'm going to talk to the singles mostly today. I'll also talk to the married folk. But I want to talk to the singles to encourage you. Because I want you to understand your singleness is a blessing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When you talk to married folks, you'll realize that marriage is not for somebody that's weak. Marriage is not for people that can't go through issues. Marriage is not for people that can't take pain, heartache. Marriage is not for people that are lazy. So, if you're single, you have certain freedoms that uh, married folks don't have. In all honesty, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 7, if you are single, don't look to be married. (laughs) But in actuality, we're living in a time when it seems like everybody's looking to be married and can't enjoy their singleness. Oh, my goodness. Being single, the freedom you have while you're single. Man. It's crazy how God instituted marriage right from the beginning. But then again, Paul tells you in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it says, listen, I want you to be free from anxiety. First, start, starting with verse 32, 1 Corinthians 7, it says, the unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man it's, is anxious about worldly things and how to please his wife and his interests are divided. Did you catch that? And the unmarried or betrothed woman, meaning somebody that's engaged, that woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. 
But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. I say this to you for my own benefit, for my own benefit, not to lay any restraints upon you, but to promote good and order and secure your undivided devotions to the Lord. What is the, the apostle saying there? It's saying, while you are single, for you to enjoy your singleness, learn to serve the Lord God and not just yourself. Because the issue is, your mentality has been, I need to find a mate, I need to find a mate, I need to find a mate. But if you learn to serve the invisible God first, you'll be able to serve your physical mate second. That went over your heads. If you could serve God who's invisible and be faithful to him in your singleness, then when you do get a mate, it won't be an issue for you to serve the person in front of you. But the problem that I see in our church, when I say church, I'm talking about church in general, is at times we come so we could find a mate in God instead of coming to find God. That's a problem. That's a problem. Because remember, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then everything else will be added unto you. But you can't come seeking God. You come to church decked out, my brother. You look good. But just so you somebody could catch your eye or you could catch somebody's eye. Sister, you come looking nice, but just so somebody could see, oh, who is that? Let me tell you something. While you are serving, God will touch somebody's heart to say, look at that one. I'm going to take my time this month. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to take my time. Because I want you to understand and prepare you for the future and also while you're in marriage to be able to serve God faithfully. Because I, I want your healing to be complete, not just physical, but emotional. And not just emotional, but psychological. So enjoy your singleness. Your singleness is precious to God. Listen, you shouldn't, you, the same amount of time you should be spending in prayer, some of us spending on the phone, saying nothing. I know y'all don't want to hear that. I know, I know. The same amount of time that you're spending in someone's DM. Why don't you direct message the Lord? Because the problem is, again, we're all looking for somebody, but the person that could give you that somebody is right in front of you, and you keep ignoring him, and he's like, okay, you want to do your own thing? Go ahead. Ah, can I take it further for you? Again, I'm talking to the singles, to the singles. Where you go is what you attract. If you think you're going to get a man of God at the bar, you're... F you go to the bar to get a man, you're going to get a drunk. Are you here with me? If you go to the club to get a woman, you're going to get a... I'm going to say biblically, I'm going to say you're going to get a gomer. <laughs> I want you to understand uh, where you go, that's what you attract, and that's what comes to you. But for some reason, you think, oh, no, there's no men out there. There's men out there. You're just going to the wrong places. <sighs> but young man, I know it's tough out there for you because I have to talk to you first. I know it's hard out there for you because uh, you seem to be satisfied with the status quo with just living your life, jumping from one woman to another. That's not fruitful. That's dangerous. Do you know why that's dangerous, young man? I'm glad you asked. 
Because the same emotional baggage that you have that that relationship can't work with, that's the same one you bring to somebody else. Let me take it further. When you bring it to that young woman now, now you're comparing her to the old one that you were with. And you keep piling it on with comparisons with this one has this one, this one has this, this one has this. Can I be honest with you? You will never find a perfect woman. And young woman, you will never find a perfect man. Amen. Titus 2 says, verse 6, likewise, urge younger men to be self-controlled. That's a big word for us in the 21st century. Have self-control. Young man, you don't need to have sex with everyone that passed by. Yeah. Self-control. <laughs> Likewise, urge the younger men to have self-con? To be self-controlled. It says, show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works. Some of us have bad reputation at your job, at your church, even at school. Everybody know you to be not a faithful man. You don't think the ladies talk about you? When you go by, they're like, yeah, just stay away from that one. <laughs> for, you to have a, for you to be a model of good works in your teaching, show integrity, dignity, sound speech that cannot be condemned so that an opponent may be put to shame having nothing evil to say about us. You give us a bad reputation as men. You make us look bad. They see us, they put all of us in a doghouse together. Some of us are staying faithful. Some of us are being, you know, fruitful. Some of us are working hard. How you sleep, you know, until 10 p.m. or 10 a.m. and you're the man. No, 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 you got off work at 5 p.m. Y'all were like, well, I just got off work at 8. No, 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 no. You work at 9 to 5. You get home, you eat dinner, you take a nap, you wake up, watch TV, play on the phone, go to Facebook, check Instagram, and then you go to TikTok, watch some short clips, and after that, for you to be able to lay back down and go to sleep. Let me rephrase that. Because a lot of times you go watch ESPN now, that's how you fall asleep. I want you to understand, uh, as a young man growing up, the best thing you could do is to feed your mind. Somebody say, feed your mind. As a young man, you should be reading. You should be building yourself. You should have things that you're putting inside of your mind. Oh. Listen, when you're having conversations with a young lady, for it to be intellectual... And not just, huh? Uh, oh. She's having a conversation with you. She uses the word indud indubitably. You're like, into what? You need to go in depth with your mind for you to be smart, for you to be intelligent, for you to be able to speak ghetto and to be ebonics, I mean. Or you could speak intelligently with any folk. But for some reason, we just want to stay in the ghetto. Yo, doll, my man, like, hold on. We got to be able to say, hey, how you doing, sir? What's going on? There are times for you to be thug, but there's a time for you to be proper. Yeah. There are benefits to being single. There are benefits to being single. Being single, you got freedom to travel. You get to go to Dubai. You get to go to Fiji. You get to go to, go to, to you know, Tahiti, you know. Some of y'all don't know nowhere but Palm Beach County. You get to travel, enjoy yourself. No one is tying you down. All you need to do, hey, Mom, I'm going somewhere. Dad, I'm going somewhere. And you get up and you... My wife is married. She called me yesterday telling me she was going to spend the day at, you know, the night at PSL. I said, wait a minute now. I ain't know about this. How am I supposed to live tonight? <laughs> Houston, we got a problem. <laughs> but understand, if she was single, 
She had nobody to check with. She would have gone ahead, get up, I had cool. I'm... When you are single, you have freedom to spend. Oh, ladies, y'all like that one, huh? That's a demon. <laughs> you have freedom to spend. Every married folk in here know before you make any big purchases, you check with your spouse. Uh, baby, I'm about to go over 150. Because <laughs> you know you got a budget. There's certain things y'all want to do for you to be able to say, hey, is, is, are we good? But when you're single, listen, you spend however you want. You go and have your $50 steak dinner, ain't no problem. You're sitting there just having your time of your life. But when you're married, every penny count. Especially when you got kids. Formula, diapers, like Jesus. And now you got gas. Thank God it's going down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you are single, the next benefit is that you have dependency on the Lord and not on someone else. When you're dependent upon the Lord and not on someone else, you don't need to depend on anyone. You don't need to depend on the young woman to give you emotional needs. You don't need to depend on the man to give you financial need. You're trusting in God. All your anxiety is given to God and not on someone else. You focus on the Lord and not on someone else. For you to be able to spend time with God. My goodness. And then you spend time with blood family. When you're married, you ain't got time for that. I promise you, if I was not married, I'd probably be at my sister's house almost every other weekend. My brother-in-law, Sam, would get tired of me. Like, yeah, man, come on. But since I'm married, I got a wife. I'm like, I ain't going to chill at home. But when you're single, you're able to spend time with your siblings, with your mom, dad, aunties. You get to visit and do certain things. But when you're married, your time is limited. When you are single, you have time for you to be able to build a great career. Because this is the time to do it. Some of us are wasting our time doing TikTok videos. Listen, if it brings money, it brings money. But that's not going to last forever. You got to keep making videos. And we get older, y'all. Okay. Talk about I'm making millions. No problem. But I've realized NBA players spend millions very quickly too. But understand, there's a blessing in being single. Somebody say blessing in singleness. You don't need to rush to be married. There's a blessing in your singleness. Enjoy your singleness. Enjoy that freedom, young person. Enjoy that freedom. Go out, spend, do whatever you need to do. No one is going is gonna to tell you jack because that's your money, your time, and your resources, and your God. Now, can I talk to the married folks? God is going to bring some healing to you. Because some of us that have been single, you've been racking your brain and yourself trying to figure out, I need to get married, I need to get married, and not really enjoy your singleness. But let me explain this to you. There is a blessing in marriage. Being married is also a blessing, but that's only when it's in the Lord. If you look at Genesis, the Bible said that God took the rib from Adam and created the woman called Eve created the woman. Now, keep in mind, he took the rib, and I had to research to figure out what is the essential function of the rib? What does the rib do? The first thing that the rib does, it protects vital organs that's, uh, that's found in your chest area, such as heart, lungs, uh, part of the liver, and your spleen. It protects all of that, meaning if God has, if you have found a woman and she is your rib, that means she needs to be able to protect you from your heart to make sure your heart is never broken. For you to be able to breathe and not suffocate. And to make sure that all your functions function properly in life, meaning businesses, your household, and everything else function correctly when you have found that rib that you're looking for. Uh, hmm, 
but some of us young ladies that are married, you are not a rib, you are spare rib. You cause more problems for these vital organs than you help them function. That's an issue. That's an issue. Because you're there to be able to protect the heart. You're there to be able to protect the lungs. You're there to be able to protect the spleen and also the liver, part of the liver. Understand what these things do in your body. Your heart is what pumps blood all over your body. That means I can't live without my heart. Listen to me, young woman. You have to be so precious to a guy for him to know that, listen, this is my rib right here, and I can't live without it. I can't breathe without her. I'm an old school fighter. The first place I punch you is in your ribs to make sure, because I know it's going to be a short fight if you can't breathe. You guys ever get your ribs kicked in or punched? Listen, once it's cracked, you, you, take, you take short breaths. Like <laughs> and that's exactly what happens when your rib is broken. Listen to me. I don't want you to be a broken rib to your husband. I need you to be a full rib to be able to protect his heart. Some of us today, you have a husband, but yet you're talking to somebody online that God says you need to stop today. But I see the fellas are happy to hear this message. But what I want you to understand is the fact that before God even gave Adam Eve to put him to sleep, he gave him a career, he gave him a job for him to do. Help me, Holy Spirit. How do you want an Eve without a job? How do you want an Eve without a career? How do you want an Eve without having any type of money in your account? Listen to me. If you want an Eve, then you have to have a mission. And once God has given you a mission, then you will find a woman that will have the submission. So, fellas, let me ask you, what is your mission in life? Can I be honest with you? If you're 35, 40 years old, you need to let the career of rapping, you know, go. There's no reason for you to be a rapper anymore. You need to stop. I, I, honestly. By the time I got to my 30s, Max, and I, I, I couldn't run the way I used to anymore, I didn't care. My goal was to be a soccer player, you know, a great footballer. Man, please. I saw my speed begin to slow down at 32. Guys that I used to blow by, next thing you know, I'm just sitting there doing this, guarding them. I said, well, there goes that career. But for some reason, you think that, oh, no, I still got hope for me to be able to be a, a you know, basketball player. My man, you 5'9". You're 32 years old. We got to move on. There's only one Muggsy Bow. There's only one Spud Webb. I understand you could dunk, but when it comes to the NBA, it's something else. It's something else. I was watching a documentary yesterday where they were talking about the NBA and N1. Y'all remember the N1 tapes? Where the guys were doing all sorts of moves and beautiful moves. And they, you know, they looked at the guys because the guys were like, I could have played in the league. And the NBA player was like, no, you couldn't. And then they, they crushed their dream. They said, you don't have the discipline. You weren't strong enough or fast enough. Though you're able to dance and look nice, but that didn't mean that you could make it in the league because it took a certain mindset to be able to make it, to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, to go clock in, to put in the work in the gym, and then for you to be able to be just as fast as somebody else that's just as strong and fast as you. 
So, young man, listen, let's find something to do. It doesn't matter. Let's find something to do. Let's find, uh, you, you can be a garbage man and have a good wife. I want you to understand this. There's careers out there. You're saying no to stuff and you ain't got a penny in the bank. Find a job somewhere. Go to McDonald's. Do something. You need to do something. There's no reason for you to sit there and be broken, yet you're talking to every Jane and Jane, you know, and that pass by, say, little mama, come here. Let me talk to you. You ain't got no money, bro. How are you going to, how are you going to take them out? Man, Jesus, help me, God. Now, let me get back to us young women, because I want you to understand, as a wife, you have to protect your husband's heart. You have to be able to protect your husband's heart. I understand in our modern time, in 21st century, every woman wants to think that, listen, I could be just like another man, meaning I could cheat, I could do all of this. Be careful. Be careful. Emotionally, you guys are stronger than us. Physically, we're stronger, but emotionally, you guys are stronger than us. You're able to take certain things that for some reason, as soon as you cheat on us, we're fought, but we're, we're done. A guy cheats on a woman, the woman's like, all right, bro, all right, well, we'll fix it. We'll get it together, you know. Uh, but when a, when, when a woman cheats on a man, he's devastated. He's like, oh, man, you know, we're gone for like a good year, you know, sobbing and just, man, I can't believe she did this to me. And we're never the same after that. So I want you to understand you're there to be able to be a protector of your husband's heart. A protector of your husband's heart. There, honestly, if I share my testimony, when I first got married, Pastor Mark, my wife would tell me, listen, be careful with so-and-so. I didn't listen. I was like, man, come on, stop. She's just, she said, no, she's just nice. She said, huh? It's not until I, I get put in a predicament that I, gosh, tell her she was right. I'm like, okay, next time I know. You think I learned? Happen again. Be careful with so-and-so. <laughs> like, nah, stop, man. No, nah, it's okay. They're just nice. <sighs> you have to be able to protect the, the heart. The lung is just so you can breathe. It gives you breathing power. Some men stay away. You notice some men stay away from your house because they can't breathe in the house. Because you keep suffocating them. You keep suffocating them. You keep thinking, I need to do it this way. And if it's not this way, then I... I it's like, as soon as they walk in the house, it's just talk, 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 talk. Have you noticed your husband comes home just to sleep? He finds a way to work extra shifts. To work late. So, so he doesn't come home. Because he knows I'm going to be suffocated in that home. It's a simple way to cause your husband to breathe. Simple way for him to breathe right. You have to give him room so he could get some oxygen. So he could breathe. I'm talking, you know, I'm, I'm not talking physically. But I'm talking about for you to be able to, listen, you don't need to say everything that comes to your mind. The man put on a pair of shorts. I can't believe that's what you're wearing. <laughs> and then you take it so much farther, you take it into his mama's house. I knew you could. Your mama couldn't dress. I see how you're dressing. It's like, really? We, we really need to go that far? Listen, let the man breathe. Somebody say, let me breathe. I, think I'm, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish this. I might have to continue next week. I'm going to finish with the liver and this, you know, today, just so you can understand. Because the liver is what causes all the excess waste to leave your body. When you drink, that's why it causes you for you to drink water to get the waste out of your body. All the way, the liver does that. The liver does that. That's why when you drink a lot, when you have a lot of liquor, it shrivels the liver. 
It causes the liver to malfunction. So now it causes you, now your, all, the rest of your bodily functions not to work properly once the liver is gone. That's the only organism that you can never replace. Once the liver is gone, it is gone. What does that mean? That means if you are the rib that's protecting the liver, that means there's certain ways that your husband may have to come home, that you have to be the one to say, listen, baby, you need to let this stuff go. Let it out. No, no. For him to be able to talk to you, vent to you, let you know what's going on in his life. But some of us, we are so close-minded, your husband can't even tell you about his shortcomings, about things that's going on in his life. Because all you do is suffocate and talk and nag. And God wants you to be a good wife. He wants you to let the man breathe, to allow this waste to go. And even you husbands, um, you need to be able to learn to listen with these two ears that God has given you. For you to hear what your wife is saying. There are certain times you're not looking for resolution as we would do with one another, but just to be an ear to say, to hear about what her girlfriends are doing, you know, what her boss did to her, what people are doing. Like, okay, baby, I see. Oh, my God, they did this. Oh, man, I can't believe they did that. Man, your boss said, what? Oh, man, they don't need you to get an answer. They don't need you to say, listen, oh, I can't believe it. Let me go on ahead and do something. They don't need you to do a thing. They just need you to listen. Let me breathe, y'all. Let me breathe. I want our relationships to be healed. I want our marriages to be fixed. Because if you're healed physically, then you got to be healed emotionally. Some of you are carrying scars from previous relationships into your marriage now. And you haven't even gotten healed yet, yet you're jumping into another relationship. And God is telling you to pause. Come to me. Let me build you back up. Listen, man, I didn't know this was going to go so deep and so fast. Boy, 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 it looks like God's going to do something this month. Because if he's bringing this type of word to you, then there's stuff going on in the marriages that he wants fixed. There's things that go, that's going on in your lives that he wants fixed. Because I want you to understand what's happening in your marriages because right now the devil is attacking and you're not even realizing it. As we mentioned last week, there's a spirit coming into your home and you don't even realize it. You're battling your spouse when you should battle, be battling the spirit. I'm going to pause right here. I'm not going to continue. I'll finish it next week, like I said, for this specific message. Because I have a feeling God has about six weeks to go in this. Because he wants you to be able to be healed completely for your marriages to be solid. Thank you so much for watching. Please help us spread the gospel by sharing this video with your friends and family. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. Thank you and God bless.